One thing we were really determined to do was to stay together, no matter what. And that was the full-time focus. Hang on to these kids. To put them into care of CAS, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. Peterborough is a pretty, pretty town. It's right in the heart of cottage country, and it can be a wonderful place to bring up kids. But I have to admit, for me and my two kids, it's the place where we'd experienced the toughest two years of our lives. And at times, things had gotten so bad that I actually rolled up into a little ball on the floor and cried, not knowing what I should do next for the kids. And it was so tough. Nothing that I'd ever done had prepared me for anything like this. This is the place that we all lived at, as uh, the four of us lived at. This was the last place we lived at. And uh, this is where our family really started falling apart, you know? And it's the house that brings back the memories, but it's, you know, knowing that when you're in there, you know that things aren't gonna go well and they're gonna fall apart on you. And you still try to deny it and try to stay away from it and try to pretend like everything's cohesive. And lo and behold, one day, you know, you, you your life changes and next thing you know, you have one conversation that just ends your entire family. One conversation. And I remember sitting on the couch in that house and that being the way. Just being told, this doesn't work, I don't want to be here, I have no love in my heart, I've got to go. Because it leaves a giant gaping hole in your heart. That's, that's this place last place that we ever stayed at and at this point it's probably better off that way kid's mother she told us why she'd left and she had a substance abuse problem she and she just stopped being a part of the family i was suddenly a single dad and i was totally unprepared as a single parent with young kids i, I couldn't keep my job because of the long long hours i fell behind on rent and all of a sudden I found myself in a lineup with a toddler on my shoulders at the food bank. I, I turned to social services, but it still wasn't enough for the rent. So we had to move out, but where? And after a few weeks in motels, I ran out of money and in desperation, we ended up in a shelter. Um, right now we're approaching the uh, YES shelter here in Peterborough, which is where we stayed um, when things went really, really wrong before. Um, it's uh, It was a place that was really, really, really helpful to me, and that's for sure. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm just fine, thanks. Wow. Hey, Wyatt, how's it going? Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Long time. Yeah, I like the trim. Yeah, it uh, looks good. Thank you. Yeah. That's my Lemmy look. You That's know? your Lemmy look, eh? Lemmy from Motorhead? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Looks good. So how are things Steve going? certainly has a Excellent. lot of apparent uh, risk factors. Actually, um, you know, single dad, um, the active young child, um, a child who is prepubescent and female, and he's a brand new single dad, um, where he's coming from a relationship that was attempted several times to work, and he's finally at a place where he's decided, no, it's not going to work. It must be a very difficult place emotionally to be in as well. So we look at all of those sort of things, and it's not a checklist per se, but we have to take all of that into account. 
Um, is that in itself a risk? Personally, I don't think so. It's all in how the parent handles it. Hi, Patricia. Sorry to keep you waiting. Um, yes, we do have an available. So, uh, you can Wow. It looks the same. It smells the same. Wow. I kind of want to go upstairs, but at the same time, I think, I think I'm good, you know? I don't need to reminisce too much. Wow. I remember chasing Hayden down that hallway time and time again, squealing and screaming up here. I wasn't supposed to, but they allowed Hayden to do that, so that was all right. The shelter had really, really helped us, but it wasn't the easiest place to live. It was set up for teenagers and not for families. I, I can remember sitting on my bed in our room upstairs and just seeing how small the room really was. At night, my heart would beat so hard. I was so nervous with all the sounds coming in from the hallway when the kids would come in at night for their curfew. Hey, if I gotta go inside, buddy, you gotta come outside. And as time progressed, this room opened up when another family left. We moved into here and it was essentially, you know, set the room up to fit your needs. Uh, we had two beds like this, these large Corrections Canada beds <laughs> uh, came in later. Uh, actually, they're just new now. And it was quite a process just to try to find a way to create enough space and you know separation at the same time without having blinds or walls. Parenting in a shelter is not easy. Uh, you really have no place to be alone with the kids. They have rules, but they're not your own, and we have to live by them. Like at meal times or curfew, for example, it, it becomes really, really difficult to be a parent. My son, who at the time was two, had to be watched every second. Uh, where I could normally give him some freedom and time to mature. It seemed like he'd regressed into that of something more like a baby, not a two-year-old. Uh, I was intimidated uh, as a dad because I wondered if I was being watched all the time. And would they call children's aid and have the kids put into foster care until I'd found a job or had a home for them? I didn't even have a piece of paper saying that I had legal custody of these kids. It wouldn't have taken much to split the three of us up. Hayden's a beautiful kid, and uh, Jordan is extremely helpful. So as a dynamic, that was good to see. But we could also see the um, frustration in Steve. Um, it, it's bad enough for uh, young people, teenagers, to be in a shelter situation, but to have a single parent uh, with kids with this kind of dynamic, it must have been extremely difficult for him to to manage them. There is. I'll see what we can do. Let me just get these to Belinda and then I'll fix it. My dad told me the situation long before we were moving into the shelter. And he told me that um, we didn't have that much money and we couldn't pay to be where we lived. So we had to go somewhere else. He told me I was still going to go to my normal school. I just had to take the bus. So here, so my dad explaining it was a good idea, I think, instead of like just not telling me at all, because I wouldn't have appreciated that. He's spending an entire night at a hospital. I'd like to see a smile today. Okay? No, you want a hug. Thank you. I love you. I'll try to keep the egg off you. My father, his name is Steve. Why did you stop it? Um, he's not my real birth father. My mom met him, I guess, five years ago, I think it was. So, after I got to know him, 
I asked him if I can call him dad, and that's how we really became a big, huge family. Candy app. Nice. Decided <clears throat> to do that. One thing we were really determined to do was to stay together, no matter what, and that was the full-time focus. Hang on to these kids. It, I, I wasn't going to give them up to foster care. There was just no way. Um, it, it was it was like the first thing that I'd done successfully. Every other thing that I'd done up until this point had felt like a massive failure. How can you leave something that you love so much? And, you know, when... She left and left me with our son and her daughter. I couldn't fathom seeing that little girl that I loved so much and needed somebody to love her so much be put into a system that would never ever give her what she needs. And with their mother being part of that system when she was growing up and it not doing a lot of justice for her, I couldn't see placing, you know, a 10 year old or a, I guess a nine year old at the time or a two year old in that position and just lose them in a system and never see them again. Also with me being adopted, you know, somebody gave me a chance when I needed it and I would never ever deprive them of that. And, you know, to put them into care of CAS, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. You know, that would have been the end of it for me. You know, I always thought that social services were there to help you get back on your feet, or at least to guide you through this new lifestyle of poverty and parenting. Uh, but it's really a catch-22. I thought there'd be daycare, right? Uh, somewhere I could put Hayden in during the day and Jordan after school, you know, uh, to look for a job. But no, you, you have to pay for the daycare up front and then get it back. And that means it's impossible for me to get childcare because I don't have the money to pay up front. So how do I go about looking for a job? If there's no one to watch my kids, how do I get ahead? There's no advocacy for anyone in this town. If you're in trouble with the law, there's a legal center. If you have a landlord problem, there's a landlord tenant um, center, the resource center who will help you with all those kind of things. But in general, somebody like Steve, struggling to get through life because he's just been kicked in the ass, there's nothing. So let's look, you have a family who comes to the shelter, so they're not just dealing with the housing issue, and that unfortunately is what people mostly look at. This is not simply a housing issue, that's the least of their worries. It's how are their kids gonna to get to school? Because now they're outside of another area. How are their kids gonna deal with the fact that they're living in a shelter at the school now? How do the parents deal with that fact with all their friends? How do they go about their day-to-day -day life they now, they don't have the same money that they had in case of a fire. They've lost everything. So not only that, but they're dealing emotionally with all those issues coming into a place. And as much as we would like to be different, we're not set up to handle the emotional issues. We do our best as individuals, as human beings, trying to help another human being through a hard time. And that's all we can do. I would love to see a lot more resources. We, we need advocacy for uh, parents in this situation. We need advocacy for families um, who are, it's not just those who are homeless, but those who are on the edge of losing their homes. And that is massive. Getting out of the shelter by Christmas, that was the thought that kept me positive. You know, the shelter was no place for kids to spend their Christmas morning and it would have made me feel like such a failure as a dad and as a provider. I mean, we wouldn't have had a tree, and, and, or at the very least, we would have been sharing the one in the office, which of course wouldn't be the same. And this would have been the first Christmas that my son had been old enough to understand that it was actually Christmas. And even Jordan, it could have been the last year for her to believe in Christmas, period. I'm assuming that if we are settled in time, I will be able to go down to the Salvation Army Christmas hamper, sign up for it again, which is something we used last year, and you know at least you know see some things under that tree or at 
you know, some things for Christmas, make it so Santa Claus did come. I got a headache. Oh. <laughs> oh, you don't do that. Anywho, you're not going to be able to be moved out tomorrow. Okay. The truck is booked all day. Okay. And he was in the basement because uh, it was flooded. Today, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to try for Sunday. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a real rotten day, okay? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. Just to let you know, but I had to call him because he thought he was going to do it tomorrow. Too. Okay. The truck won't be here. Fair enough. Sorry. Okay. All right. So yeah, and as I was saying, anyway, that just that's par for the course at this point. Uh, take that in stride, whatever. You know, still moving. Go me. Paying rent for you know a place I'm not going to be living in, but that's okay too, I suppose. I'm going to do but, Just two days before Christmas, we finally moved there to the shelter, and it was just in time. a new home. Um, it was the best gift that we'd received. The shelter had helped us get into the subsidized housing at a co-op project. And finally, we all had our own bedrooms and a place to put up our tree. Uh, the, shelter, the shelter staff went way out of their way to gather donations so the kids and I could have an amazing Christmas to remember. It really was unbelievable. Look at that Lego, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fix it. Look what Jordan got. Oh, Ooh, a mystery gift. No, it wasn't. Oh. Stop for a sec. There's... The year after, we saw the Yes Shelter uh, float in the Christmas parade downtown. And that's when Jordan decided she wanted to go down there and help out and say thank you for what they did before and she actually said that so we spent a we spent the morning helping out wrapping some presents for another family that was going to be stuck there during christmas and i mean my heart really really went out to them because we could have faced the exact same situation and i, I was so grateful and i was that i was lucky enough to get housing geared to income and get out of the shelter so we'd have a chance to succeed the three of us perfect absolutely Put that down there pull those corners over yeah just like that just like that and uh the other day i've been waiting for many 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 months for this and i checked the mail like a every day run to the mailbox three four times Hey, buddy, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. And the other day I got this in the mail. And this is my personal and confidential, which it won't be so confidential after I mention it to you and everyone else, is that um, my personal and confidential mail was, I finally received documentation stating that um, I have not only custody, but I have sole and final custody of both my kids. Um, and that... If there's to be any more visitation from their mother, who has not been a responsible parent for years now, um, will be at my sole discretion. So I now have the ability to do what I want. We can leave the city. We can do whatever we need to do in order to you know, make life 
unfurl now. So this thing is the best Christmas present I've ever got in my life. This is the best piece of paper that I've ever had. And I don't know what I wanted to do with it. Framing it seems totally inappropriate, <laughs> but it seems so fitting at the same time. But this is, this is something I've been waiting so long for. And the fact that it showed up just in time for the holidays is, you know, is absolutely perfect. And, you know, of course that prompted me to make a few phone calls. I have the paperwork, yay! And I, I put it on my Facebook. You know, I didn't put on my Facebook exactly what the paperwork is. Just that I was happy to have official paperwork. Huh. Come in. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to have been here and got to spend some time, see how things are with you. And, uh, you know, good to reminisce, but as I said before, it's better to not be a, uh, be a tenant. Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to take off. That would yeah. wait too long to have you around. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, eh? Can't stand me that long, eh? Anyway, I'm gonna have to take off. Okay. But, you know, I gotta tell you, I really appreciate everything that you did for us. You, you, you know, found us a place to stay, and, you know, we've been comfortable ever since, and, you know, a lot of good things have started to happen since, so it's been, uh, it's been a real blessing, so. That's you know, real nice, Dan. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've been more help than you'll ever know, really. You're yeah. You're you very take welcome. care, man. You take care. Okay. You too. I'll see you soon. See you. I think that there's way too much judging going on of people who come into these tough times, who have to use shelters. And, and uh, I hear it around town, oh, those are the Shelley kids, you know, or, oh, that family, they're in the shelter. It's like, pfft. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, what kind of family are they? It's just wrong. You know, people get in a tough situation and it's not their fault. Or maybe it is their fault. Maybe it's part of their choices. Doesn't really matter. And, and as individuals, as human beings, we should be here to help others. And we should be open-minded enough to say, that's not me. But they don't have to be there. Let's help. Let's, what can I do to make that a better situation? And that's what I keep telling the workers here as well. What can we do to make it better for our clients so that when they leave here, they're leaving on a positive note that we've helped them enough, we've guided them enough to find the place to live, to find uh, the emotional strength to be out looking for work again, to be able to look after their kids in a positive way. Hi, Daddy. How was school? Good. Excellent. How are you? Good. You have a good day? Yeah? That's awesome. Yeah. Ready to go home? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we have to do Jordan's papers, eh? We. Yeah, everybody likes papers. Yeah. Everybody I don't. Everybody likes papers. I don't like papers. You love papers. Uh, for my family and I, being on the edge of crisis and having somebody reach their hand out and help us uh, when they did, actually allowed for us to build a positive family and social structure and get back into what we all consider to be the real world. Uh, it allowed for me to, you know, um, find other resources to help the, help the kids out. And, you know, Jordan was able to find a paper route and feel like she was a real natural kid. Hayden got to turn around and play with friends and do things that a normal child would do. And at the end of it, every day, Somebody has something to smile about, and that has been really, really important in our own well-being. And every time I see those kids smile, I, I can look back on that time and be able to say thank you to some of the systems, like the shelter, and say thank you for it.